What do you suppose lives in these waters? Frogs can often be found in places like these, both large and small. They are called vernal pools. Climate change can cause these waters to evaporate faster or slower than usual, affecting frogs' population, hibernation, and mating patterns. Even though it may not seem like it, we can learn a lot from these little guys. We as humans can benefit from these creatures if we pay enough attention. We are Tiana Good, Vivian Gunn, and Morgan Holt, three eighth graders from Traverse City West Middle School. We were curious about the effects of climate change on frogs and their environment. This led us to ask James Stake, Education Director at Grass River Natural Area, to help us get a better understanding on how and why they adapt so well. So changing temperatures can affect frogs in a variety of ways. Um, one of the most um, impactful things I've seen at Grass River, uh, we have a series of what are called vernal pools throughout the natural area, which are spring pools that are wet during the springtime, but then by summertime they dry up. Um, frogs use, utilize these pools for mating and for laying eggs. Um, and so higher temperatures, warmer temperatures, more variable temperatures uh, can cause those pools to dry up sooner than they typically would. Um, so that gives less, of, less time for eggs to incubate in the water, uh, less time for mating, um, which can affect frog populations. They're very sensitive to their environment, environmental changes, but at the same time they're very, very resilient. Um, so wood frogs, for instance, in really cold temperatures, uh, they can actually technically freeze, um, but they have like an antifreeze inside their bodies that prevents them from being harmed by it. Um, whereas in really warm temperatures, to dry out, there's drought, um, their, their skin is very sensitive to those dry conditions, um, which can be harmful. The delay of winter and fall running longer, um, frogs have to basically stay out of hibernation for longer periods of time. Um, so they end up using more energy before they go into hibernation, uh, which can be harmful to them um, because they have less energy stored up to make it until the spring. <laughs> um, with hibernation and kind of the seasonal changes uh, between spring, summer, and fall, um, that length of time that they're active uh, becomes longer or shorter depending on when they come back out in the spring or if stay later into the spring. Uh, at Grass River in particular, uh, we don't have really have any long-term studies to really focus on populations specifically uh, at our location, uh, but there is the Michigan Frog and Toad Survey, uh, which has been a long-running survey they've done on frogs uh, and throughout the state. Um, and if you look at the, their data of frogs throughout Michigan, um, there has been a slight decline uh, overall in frog pretty much every species in Michigan. Um, not a huge alarming decline here in Michigan, but definitely a trend uh, of a de decrease. Um, there are a couple different ways for people to get involved through citizen science. I mentioned the frog and toad survey. Um, that's a uh, survey where you can go out uh, uh, different times throughout the spring season um, and actually listen for frogs and based on the types of species that you hear and the quantity that you hear, um, you're able to kind of quantify populations. Um, there's also something called the Michigan Herp Atlas, um, which is basically a database of sightings of reptiles and amphibians throughout the state. Uh, so people can go out in their backyards into local parks, uh, take photographs of the frogs that they see, um, and upload those online. And it helps to keep track of not only distribution of frogs throughout the state, uh, but also gives an idea of population numbers as well. So you could come to Grass River. Grass River is a fantastic spot to look for frogs, uh, not only in vernal pools, but we have a, a lot of wetlands, cedar swamp, sedge meadows, um, where there are a lot of amphibians and frogs, um, and, and, and really throughout the region, we have a wealth of natural areas where you could look for amphibians in any wetlands. Online, you can get audio files of every frog species in Michigan, um, and so you can listen to the different types. So that's like for the frog and toad survey, um, you, can kind of train yourself by listening to the audio clips so that when you go out and do your survey route, you can hear and listen which types of frogs there are. Climate change can cause many issues in frogs' ecosystems. As you may have heard, environmental changes can affect frog egg incubation, hibernation, and mating patterns. This is what makes frogs such an impeccable indicator species. They're able to adapt according to cold, hot, or dry weather. Frogs are very capable creatures, but we need to help them out by doing things such as keeping our litter out of their homes and being mindful of frogs' habitats.